Well, it's a bit of a long story. Uh, I graduated from, uh, from UQ, Mechanical and Space Engineering. Uh, did quite well at that. Uh, I was working part-time for an acoustic consultancy company measuring road traffic noise. I thought, this is a little bit boring, let's, let's move on. So went straight into a PhD. At the time, the, the Scramjet program was big, um, so I picked up a topic from that uh, campaign. It was uh, in uh, spinning rocket guidance, which was very challenging. Probably a, quite limited in application, um, although it did lead me into my first real job, which was uh, the postdoctoral appointment at UQ working on the Scram Space project. So Scram Space 1 went for three and a half years or so. I was in charge of the exo-atmosphere uh, reorientation with cold gas thrusters. Uh, fascinating project. Uh, I was a little disappointed that all the work we put in up during that project really never came to fruition. Scram Space never took off, never got above five kilometres. It was meant to get up to sort of low Earth orbit, 330 kilometres. Uh, and then all the work that everyone had done uh, just, just ended up being um, sitting in academic papers. So I thought, well, here's a real opportunity to, to commercialise some of that uh, activity that went on, and uh, hence CB Aerospace was born. So CB Aerospace was a, a startup company with a bunch of very smart people. Um, we didn't have quite the ingredients together to make it a successful company. Uh, and I saw a, a really big opportunity in the drone space and uh, hence Skyborne was, was born. In terms of uh, customer need in the drone space, uh, there was uh, a, an immediately obvious need um, in the, the commercial drone area. So you've either got top-end military drones that are worth a few hundred million each, or you've got the real low-end drone uh, that's sort of $2,000. So something that commercial uh, people could use in terms of agriculture, mining, real estate, all this kind of thing, uh, they really needed something that was around the twenty, thirty thousand dollar price mark, mm -hmm. and um, and capable of of doing a lot of different things. We went from a technology standpoint, and then uh, found a, a very nice fit in the market, uh, and then we've tailored our solution based on customer feedback as well. For example, uh, the Navy say they, they need a, a vehicle that can take off vertically and land vertically in a 15 knot crosswind as well as have a high top speed. So uh, all our future designs are based around requirements of what customers want. The team building exercise was the, uh, probably one of the hardest things to do. Uh, having the right team behind you is, is uh, the most important ingredient. And you talk to venture capitalists and other funding agencies and, this, and the team is the most important thing. Um, so for me, I handpicked the best uh, people I knew at the time. Um, I was doing some lecturing at UQ and the top 5-10% of my graduating class I invited to come on and do work experience. So I had about 10 top students come and work for me, uh, unpaid, which I thought was great. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, there were three or four of them left and I thought these guys are the, the guys that are going to stick around and really put the effort in. So these were the guys that uh, were interested in more than just securing a nice salary out of Boeing or a Lockheed Martin and really wanted to try something innovative and new. Well, basically, I started my undergrad engineering degree at UQ. And in my final semester, I did a uni course that was lectured by Michael. And I did quite well in that course. And he approached me at the end of it with an offer of some work experience. My original thought was that I was going to get a bit of experience while applying for jobs and then go into a nice job. But that changed very quickly because um, I realised how interesting the startup world is and um, how their projects are, are much better than something that you'd work on at a, um, a run-of-the-mill normal engineering job upon graduating. So originally I was the chief technical officer, so basically I managed a small team of engineers who are largely friends of mine at uni and um, you know a bit of half technical and sort of half um, management and business. And um, now I've moved more into an operations officer. We have cool names. But um, what that basically entails is I manage the day-to-day -day operations of Skyborne Media. So going out and um, conducting shoots and um, organising with clients, all that sort of stuff around our media operations. So I studied engineering at UQ. I also did mechanical and aerospace. Um, how I got into Skyborne is because I went to university with uh, a few of the people who already worked in Skyborne and based on that I came in to do some work experience. Um, initially my plan was also to you know, come in, get some work experience, uh, build up my skills and 
maybe apply for a different job somewhere else. But when you come into a startup like Skyborn, um, you become immersed in the culture here, and that's the part that is probably the biggest draw for me. Um, in a startup culture, then it's not as strict. Um, I'm not stuck doing paperwork all day every day. I am constantly doing something new, something exciting in engineering. In my day-to-day -day job, I basically do media editing. I get to meet a lot of people. I get to go out to use our new technology, and that's all very exciting. And that's definitely the part that made me stay at Skyborn. So engaging with customers' needs is one of the most important things that you have to do in a startup, because otherwise you are at risk of building something that nobody wants, and that's a whole lot of wasted time. So before we started conducting our media activities with real estates and property developers, we started with um, like initial uh, interviews, phone calls and that sort of thing to work out what they actually really wanted. It's really improved my communication skills particularly. So as a graduate, you're usually working on assignments, you're usually just studying. Um, being forced to go out and meet people and talk to people and most importantly understand their needs you have to be able to communicate effectively. And just having that chance to see so many people is a huge improvement to my communication skills. The, probably the biggest lesson I've learned is that whenever someone does a technology startup, they want to be a Google or they want to be a Tony Stark and have this big uh, glorious empire. Uh, you can't go straight from nothing to a global empire. Uh, you've got to start from scratch and there are various uh, stepping blocks along the way. So the biggest lesson I learned is that you can, uh, you need to be uh, invested in the three tiers of innovation. So the, the ground level, the day-to-day -day, uh, bread and butter business, uh, which in our case is doing photography for developers in real estates. Uh, and the second level, which is how can we get that first physical product, hardware product into the market. And then the third level and beyond is this blue sky stuff, the, the Tony Starks sort of thing. So you have to be a little bit invested in each of them. But fundamentally, in order to get a business off the ground, you need to have that cash flow coming in. And to have that coming in, you need to be good at sales. So you just got to sell, sell, sell.